My name is Nathan. Um, I work for Civic Analytics, and I'm happy to talk to you all about our work looking at the potential of urban rail in Austin, Texas, and how we basically use City Engine to improve our, our analysis. So the project started at the beginning of last year when Urban Rail went on the ballot for November, and the city of Austin wanted to know what happens if you build Urban Rail and what happens if you don't build Urban Rail from an economic development standpoint. And the major collaborators were the city of Austin, the University of Texas, uh, a, cent a citizen advisory committee made up of neighborhood stakeholders, leaders, and civic analytics. The scope of the analysis was basically a half mile buffer uh, along the Urban Rail corridor reaching from a new Austin Community College campus south through the University of Texas, downtown, and then almost to the airport with the idea that over time it would be extended. The workflow for our project was essentially like this. We started with a, a big library of Central Texas type buildings, threw in some GIS data, and ran Envision Tomorrow, which is a scenario planning software, and then depending on the visual and analytical results, we would send that to UT professors who are our analytics experts, and we would send it to the uh, advisory committee who are neighborhood experts, and they would tell us whether our development decisions made sense, whether they didn't make sense, why or why not. And then we would take that feedback, and we would adjust our analysis. So that section was pretty important, and we would keep going until we had as strong of an analysis as possible. So to start, we subdivided our route into three uh, sub-areas, north, central, and south, basically. And we used population and employment data as our guide. So we had 2010 census data, we had 2030 projection data, and we took the difference of that, which we called our control total, and then we used buildings from our building library to try and match that control total. So in addition to each of these buildings having an attribute for people or jobs, they also had a lot of attributes for things like estimated property tax revenue, water use, parking spaces, impervious cover, things like that. So depending on the mix of buildings we use, we get a unique insight into the difference between a build and a no-build scenario. And then as I said, we would try to get feedback, which is important to challenge our assumptions and make our analysis as strong as possible. So the way we would get feedback is we would send numerical data, or indicators, and then maps. So this is, a, this is an incomplete map, but the thing I wanted to point out is the size of the legend, which is basically 25 to 35 uh, items or the building types, and which as I said, each contains a lot of value inside of it. So when it came to getting feedback, a lot of times we wouldn't get very much, and when we did, it would take a long time, especially from the committee, because this is a lot of data. So that's where City Engine came in. Now, when we first mentioned the idea of using City Engine, we didn't get a lot of uh, buy-in. You could tell the city couldn't really wrap their mind around how does how can a 3D model contribute to and economic development analysis. And so, and they also hadn't really heard of it, so they weren't really asking for it. They're looking for, for numbers and they're looking for maps. So we didn't end up showing it until halfway through the project, but it ended up being the perfect tool for our project. And basically, here's why. When you use Envision tomorrow, you are embedding the building data into the shapefile. So in this case, uh, we use parcels. And then when you bring a shapefile into City Engine, you're also bringing in those field attributes. So we wrote a Python script to read those field attributes from the parcel and say, okay, if this is uh, building A in this parcel, then subdivide this parcel into building A size lots. If this is building B, subdivide it into building B size lots. Then we use the script editor to go a little bit further and say, okay, if this is a building A lot, then give it building A height, and give it building A setback. If this is building B, you know, you get the picture. So we did this for all throughout the whole corridor. And our last step was to bring that data and all of our other GIS data into the City Engine Web Viewer to, sh to share it with the project team. And the first time we shared it with the project team, the difference in feedback was, was huge. Even though we've been sending the maps with essentially the same data for weeks before, they saw things that you should have seen on a map, but because it was pretty much too data intensive, they probably just missed it. And it helps when you can visualize new development in the context of the existing environment, things are easier to spot. Um, we also removed the visual complexity of the data. Notice we don't have this grand color scheme anymore. Um, if somebody in the meeting wanted to know what building is that, all you have to do is just click on it and say, oh, this is the, uh, the Four Seasons condos. And we can ask questions like, does that density make sense over there? Does that, is that the right height? Is that allowable over there? So, and we could also view the two data sets 
in the same, at the same time in the web viewer. So that makes it easier to compare and contrast different options. So we got a lot of good feedback. They're asking questions that they haven't really thought of before. And that was forcing us to, to look at our own data and validate it in a different way, which is also useful for us. And at the same time, this was all online, so they could visit it whenever they had time, if they weren't at the meeting or after the meeting, and give us feedback that way. So the whole process moved a lot faster. In our next iteration, we decided to get a little bit more detailed with the model. So we decided to look at uh, the Austin Community College campus and see what might this potential rail stop look like built out. So this is a potential rail stop with, uh, sorry, <laughs> a potential rail stop built out with some of the data. And here's a look at build and no build together. And you can see the difference in density and height um, around the new transit stop. And here's a look at the street level view. So you can see how buses, rail, cars, bikes, people, how this all might interact. And so you can see how presenting it with these new perspectives basically yield new questions, which force you to reevaluate your data, and, and which is good for the analysis. So in the end, using the City Engine Web Viewer with the committee and with the stakeholders got us more engaged with them. It got us to talk about different questions, different conversations, which forced us to look at our own data. And at the same time, this all moved faster, so we could work on our own analysis, and in the end, it improved the overall product. So that's all I have. Um, I'm more than happy to talk about any of this afterwards. I can tell you how the election went, and uh, here's, the, uh, here's my contact information. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you.